Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Human Perspective. Uh, this month is National Disability Employment Awareness Month, and so we're actually going to be doing two podcasts that will be focusing on disabled people in the world of work. And the first launch will be today talking with Diego Mariscal from Together and with Hannah Frankel from Google. So welcome. So I'm Judy Human. I'm a 73-year-old white disabled woman wearing uh, red glasses. My hair goes down to about my shoulders. I have on a print blouse and we're in our foyer that has lots of postcards and pictures and plants around. Uh, my name is Diego, Diego Mariscal. Really excited to be here. I am wearing a suit jacket and a pink dress shirt, which is rare for me, but I uh, wanted to make it special for today's occasion. Hi, I'm Hannah. Uh, I'm a 26-year-old white female sitting in my office where there's a painting behind me that my grandmother painted, and I have long red hair and a white t-shirt on. Um, could you give us a little information on what got you interested in doing entrepreneurship work? I was born in the States actually by accident. My parents, who are both Mexicans, as you know, Judy, um, were shopping and I was born six months and a half into my mom's pregnancy. And as a result of that, I have CP, cerebral palsy, uh, which for me manifests primarily in trouble walking, but I also have trouble reading and writing. And so, you know, growing up in Mexico, was especially not having any support of other disabled people was definitely a challenging experience to say the least for me and my parents. Um, also, my brother, we're 10 months and a half apart. And so he didn't have a disability. And for my parents, it was really apparent the discrimination that I face versus the discrimination that um, that or the access that he had from a from a really early age, I recognized that there was a discrepancy around the opportunities that I had access to versus other people, and so really my my work has focused around how do we change the way people perceive disability. And my dad's an entrepreneur, and I grew up in Monterrey, Mexico, which is the Silicon Valley of. Mexico, lots of people starting businesses. And I saw a lot of similarities between the disability experience and the entrepreneurship experience. From the moment we wake up, we have to figure out how to solve problems. How do we get dressed? How we drive? How we communicate? And that, in essence, is a, a business, in essence, is solving problem at scale. So together, International and my, my work here has focused around how do we translate those skills those problem solving skills that disabled people already have into entrepreneurship skills. And Hannah, how did you get involved in this? My journey to kind of this intersection of disability and entrepreneurship started when I was pretty young. I was diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia in the second grade. And I remember at the time I was super embarrassed. I had literal nightmares of my second grade teacher calling on me to read aloud and then the subsequent laughter of my classmates when they realized that I couldn't. It felt like this really big secret that I had to keep. Um, I didn't want anyone to know that I took medicine or had accommodations. And I carried this shame with me through elementary school into middle school, into high school, and until my about my sophomore year of university or at UC Berkeley, I received an email from the disabled student's office. Um, it was an email from an organization called Lime Connect which aims to rebrand disability with achievement. It was about an essay contest for students with disabilities. I kind of figured, why not? And I started writing about my disability. And it was the first time I had ever thought about it, talked about it, and it flipped a switch. Once I started, I couldn't stop. Uh, I wanted to dig deeper. So I applied to be a Lime Connect fellow, which is where I met a bunch of other students with disabilities. So interestingly, that same summer, I was an intern at Microsoft Ventures in Tel Aviv. Um, and that's where I learned about the international startup ecosystem. And I fell in love with I, you know, the idea that startups are the most sustainable vehicles for social change. So fast forward, and I'm on the next gen board for Lime Connect, which is the organization that kind of started it all for me. And I work at Google on the Google for Startups team. 
So I feel like it's because of my experience as a person with disabilities and my connections to others with disabilities that I'm able to identify where disability has been included versus excluded um, from a conversation or from an initiative. So now in my current role, it felt like a really natural next step to merge my two passions, disability inclusion and entrepreneurship, which is what brings me where I am today. Great. I really love hearing both of you speak. Why have you decided that you want to in whole or in part focus on getting disabled people into business and setting up their own businesses? As Hannah just described, I see it as an act of social change a way to redefine the way people look at disability. What I love about entrepreneurship is that it's all about how do you see an opportunity and create an opportunity. And more specifically, when it comes to founders with disabilities, how do you utilize your disability as a competitive advantage for business? What does that mean for me specifically, for example? So I, I couldn't, you know, run and play soccer with my classmates when I was when I was younger, but I spent a lot of time talking with people about their stories and learning about how to really listen to them um, and honing my communication skills. And so now the majority of my my workday is spent around meetings, talking to people and telling them what we're working on and what we're doing. And so in a way, I feel like I was able to create an environment that capitalizes on my skill sets rather than the challenges that my disability might present, right? And so I think similar to that, to my experience, I would like to encourage people to see their disability as something they can capitalize in order to succeed in business and also on employment at large. And Anna? Yeah, I, I felt like people with disabilities are really ready for an initiative like this. Um, I think about how people with disabilities were the most impacted by COVID-19, um, the most impacted by recent unemployment. And there's some interesting stats around being more tw you're twice as likely to start a business than are people without disabilities. And we know that they are already part of the entrepreneur community. Um, for example, one in three founders uh, have are, are depressed, which puts already one of three founders as part of a disability community. So there's a lot of prevalence of disability within the community. And with leaders like Elon Musk or Richard Branson coming out, you know, Elon Musk on SNL, talking about their experience as a person with disabilities, we know that there's a lot of potential for people with disabilities within the space. So it felt like, you know, a big chance to be pioneers. I, I read in the World Economic Forum that although 90% of companies have a DEI initiative, only 4% of those companies um, include disability as a part of it. So it seems like a good opportunity for Google to step up, be a leader in the space, um, which is then where international, together international comes in, because the way that we do so is by sponsoring other organizations already doing the work. Diego, can you share on work that Together has been doing? We, uh, we started our work primarily on a meetup which a meetup is the gathering of people exchanging ideas around various topics. Obviously, we focused around entrepreneurship and disability. And so it all started with a meetup conversations about what were some of the barriers that founders with disabilities faced in the entrepreneurship space. Then from there, and we still do the meetup, but from there it evolved to doing a local cohort for founders in the DNV area. And we were supported by the DC government. And then from there, we've, we've focused around doing a cohort for women, female entrepreneurs. Um, and then from there, working with Google for startups. So it's really been a progression and we've really learned along the way. And the fact that we've been doing this for a number of years now really lets us be a leader in the space, both in the entrepreneurship and disability uh, intersection. And uh, why did Google start the startups program? And maybe you could give us a little bit of information about what it is. Yeah. So the Google for Startups team uh, is a team at Google that kind of supports startups. It's our um, umbrella for all things startups. Um, and the mission of the team is to level the playing field for underrepresented founders. So 
our team got involved in kind of supporting founders. I think we started around 10 years ago. I've been on the team for about two and a half, so not nearly as long, and I don't have insight about everything that we've done. But I can say, you know, we run dozens of programs every year around the world. We have, um, in addition to the programs that we run, over 70 locally focused startup organizations that we partner with in over 60 countries around the world. Um, things like, you know, diversity minded venture funds like Backstage Capital or research institutions like Endeavor Insights, um, who we worked with to better understand how underrepresented founders like women and veterans contribute to job creation uh, and so on. So all of these different programs kind of ladder up into our mission, which is to support underrepresented founders. Diego, what is one of the reasons that disabled people say they're interested in the work that you're doing and apply to be a part of it? Traditional work environments sometimes are not accessible for folks with disabilities. And so um, entrepreneurship is often a path that they see to, to economic prosperity and to accessibility in the workplace. Entrepreneurship has become an avenue where people can um, thrive on their disability, with their disability, and not just be uh, sort of accommodated for or, uh, or struggling to manage their disability. So maybe you could explain to us the way the project between Together and Google is going to be working. We originally got connected because I you know, was obsessed with this intersection of disability and entrepreneurship. And I started reading a lot of white papers online and researching if anyone was doing anything in the space. And I found some organizations that were focused on small businesses like mom and pop shops. And I found some organizations that were working with accessibility technology, but very few to none that were focused on founders with disabilities agnostic of what they're working on, except for Together International. Um, so what I did is I, I turned up to one of their um, meetups. Yeah, that's how, how we got connected. And what's great about um, this relationship, particularly with Google for Startups, is that it's been really organic. And obviously, Hannah bringing her experience, both as a person with a disability and experience with startups, everything from the providing feedback on the application process, making sure that founders are matched, the founders that are selected for the tech cohort are matched with mentors that best fit their needs, making sure that we have speakers that are most relevant to the cohort founders. So I see this as a really true partnership where Google is not just saying, you know, we want to sponsor this, but it's more so we want to be involved in the, in the programming and in the uh, storytelling and really engaged. How do we nurture people um, who have disabilities from different uh, groupings of disabled people in different backgrounds? How do we instill within people the fact that they should not rule out becoming an entrepreneur? For a lot of the reasons people think that they wouldn't be a great entrepreneur, they're going to be a great entrepreneur. Um, especially people with disabilities. I think it's because of their disability, because of their unique perspective, because of the resilience that gets built into you as a part of your experience as a person with disabilities, that resilience will carry you forward and it will be the reason that you succeed, not you know, despite it. So I'd say it's, it's never too early to start thinking about it. If you have a passion and a problem that you want to solve, go for it um, and know that there are a lot of people out there rooting for you. Along the same lines, I think, you know, folks with disabilities in some ways have to solve problems every day of their lives just by navigating the, a world that's not built to fit their needs. And so thinking about that as a sort of entrepreneurship experience already, right? And so building on that in order to create a business. What I will say is, I'm sure every entrepreneur will tell you this, that it is hard, right? It is really, really hard. And so being able to be connected with like-minded people, and that's why I think that the meetup has become we have over 400 members already. And I think that's part of the, the value that uh, that we've been able to bring. It sounds that the work that both of you are doing is really looking at helping people who have started developing businesses in the case of the Google program, which will be focusing on technology. And it'll be very interesting for people to learn over the next six months how the project evolves and 
what information people are getting to help them continue on the road to having successful businesses. So in last words from either of you, Judy, just from an observation, right? Like what I've observed just in getting to know you over the years is you have this ability to bring people together, right? And this ability to communicate concisely with your needs are and, and what's needed in a particular situation. And I think part of that, I see it even as a way that you manage your day-to-day -day life, the, that effective communication skills, that bringing people together, um, translated into the work that you're doing and the businesses that you create. And so that's just an example of how you bring your management of disability into the context of entrepreneurship and business creation. Any last words? Yeah. I'd add that you know, people are interested in starting their own startup. You will succeed because of what makes you unique, not despite it. Well, I want to thank you both for today. And uh, look forward to learning more about how Google Startups is moving forward within this project, but then broadly speaking, because I think Google is really a company that has been embracing the inclusion of disabled people for a long time now. And so it's great to see how um, it's integrating disability across more aspects of its work. And Diego, thank you so much for being on the program today. And we look forward to learning about the success of the people you're both supporting. Amazing. Thank you, yeah. Judy, for having us. That history won't forget us or try to minimize our pain. And so why?